Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, let's continue. Uh, we will discuss uh, the common uh, trading mistakes uh, when we are using uh, the pitchfork tools. We are looking on the McDonald's stock, uh, Epic uh, MCD, uh, Mike uh, Charlie Delta on a monthly chart. Okay, and I have drawn here uh, the pitchfork tool. We need the three points to draw the pitchfork tool. The first point here where my cursor is, the second point right here. And uh, okay, the third point here with these three points, we can draw the pitchfork tool as we have discussed in the first part of this video. Okay, we want to discuss the common trading mistakes. I put here the stochastic. Um, I will change the setting of this stochastic here. Uh, moment, please. Uh, 833. Okay, and we have the RSI 14. Okay, right here below the black line here is the RSI 14. And we want to discuss the common trading mistake when traders are using the Okay, pitchfork tool. Here we can see that, um, uh, pay attention to um, the vertical line here, the vertical line, right where my cursor is. You can see that uh, the stochastic uh, is uh, overbought, and the RSI also is above 70, right here, where my cursor is, uh, stochastic overbought. And the price uh, was touching the media line of uh, uh, this um, a pitch for two, uh, pay attention to the horizontal and the vertical line were exactly there, and uh, traders okay were selling. Okay, you see that the price went down for for uh, two months because you're on a monthly chart. Two months, the second month was uh, uh, not very bearish because we didn't have uh, a lower low. If you see clearly, pay attention to these two candle here. Okay, the second month was no bearish because it went down but okay a bit but we didn't have uh, okay a new lower low if you compare the low of this uh, a bigger candle here okay I'm talking about these two candle here okay so traders were selling here okay now the common trading mistakes that traders are making when they are using the the pitchfork tool is that they are forgetting the price all right it's a common trading mistake so traders are using one trading tool they will switch their attention to the tool and they will forget the price itself that we are trading, okay? So here, because the price was touching the, because it did below the media line first and was coming back to retest it here, aggressive trader will place a trade to sell. I say to traders, wait for a clear cut signal to sell. If the signal has failed, come out, okay? But according to the market principles, because everything else can change in the market, okay? But the market principles remain intact. Everyone to work with things that are reliable. If we are working with things that are reliable, we are likely to make excellent trading decisions, okay? If the price is going up, the price looking for a better resistance level, full stop. So we see here the price going up, the price is looking for a better resistance level. If the price going down, the price looking for a better support level. As the price going up here, all we will do, we will draw to avoid making, uh, okay, uh, this is not what I want, okay, to avoid making a wrong trading decision, we will just use our trading tools, okay, uh, I mean uh, drawing tools, in this case drawing tools, to highlight the resistance level, where are they? Okay, did you see the blue line here? Price changing direction here, come back. Change the direction here, change the direction here. It was a resistance level. Now we are above a resistance level. When a price breaks above a resistance level, it's telling us that a bullish momentum is increasing right here. So you can see that as the traders were using the stochastic to sell and the RSI to sell, we can understand that, okay, because their indicator were overbought, they were just selling. Okay, right here. But if they fail to pay attention to the price itself, the number one indicator, they will forget this blue line here. And some trader will be selling right here on the edge of this blue line only to see the price change the direction as it did here. This is a typical trading mistake, forgetting the price itself, the number one indicator. All right, so the language of the price is very simple. So we are using the pitchfork tool. Do not forget that we are trading the price. You want to sell, you want to sell at the valid resistance level. You want to buy, you want to buy at the valid support level. 
In the uptrend, how do we buy? We buy when the price break above a resistance level, as you did here, the blue line was a resistance level. The price break above it and retest that resistance level. If we receive a signal here to buy, we will buy. We do not just buy, we will wait for a clear cut signal to buy. Instead of selling here because the price was, has touched the pitchfork tool, in fact, our pitchfork tool is rising, so it's not bearish uh, pitchfork tool. You can see it's rising channel, isn't it? So we will prefer to buy instead of selling. But if you want to sell, you want to sell at a resistance level at least. So here won't be a better place to sell. Here was not too bad, two months went down, but now we are at the support level, time to take profit. I would prefer to buy instead here. Knowing that some traders are very, very conservative, they would prefer to sell on the, to buy at the edge of, at the, edge of um, the pitch for two. Though, if I receive a signal here to buy, I will be very careful. Price starts going up. We want to watch again the media line because price going up, price looking for a better resistance level. The horizontal line where I'm moving my cursor, we will not ignore it. Typical common trading mistake. Where are we now? You see here, stochastic was overbought. In fact, look at the stochastic, okay? Pay attention to that, okay? If you use its stochastic, you see? Yeah, stochastic was in overbought zone for a long time. This is what I call the hold up of the market. The crazy stochastic trader were trying to, okay, confiscate the markets, okay? or to dominate the market or to control the market, but the price was just going up. So because it was overbought, they were busy selling. From uh, 2004 all the way to 2011, the Stokasi was almost in overbought zone for the Mac for this McDonald's stock, but look, the price was going up big time. Okay, RSI also was above the 70 level, you see, but the price was just going up. All right, so please, Though we are telling traders, we are showing traders how to use the pitchfork tool, do not forget that the price is the number one indicator. All right? The best signals or the best setups when we are using the pitchfork tool is when, okay, we see for instance price breaks above, okay? You see here? Well, let's draw a line here. I hope you are paying attention to this because it's very important. If you are trading without the market principle, okay, things that are remaining intact in this market, you are likely to make a lot of uh, wrong decision. And we don't want you to do that. Okay, we care about you and <laughs> we want you to make the right decisions. Very important for us. See here, if there was a resistance here, the price changed the direction here. See, went down for two months. Was a resistance level, the pink line here was a resistance level. Price break above a resistance level. Where are we now? Price is retesting a resistance level. And also, we're on the edge of the pitchfork tool. Here, if I receive, do not forget the if that I've said now, if I receive a signal to buy, I will take it. If the signal has failed, because we are dealing with a, a dynamic market, the market is not statics. News are coming in. You see last time, last week, the euro, Talking about decisions that are made about the Eurozone, Greece, those who are trading for us. You have seen how the market was changing constantly because of the noise, the politician talking, the, the, the fiscal clips in the United States, the blah, blah, blah. The news can change the dynamics of the market consistently. It's not all about the technical. It's combining the technical and fundamental and timing the trade carefully. The setup is not the end. The setup, the signal, okay? And the entry point, do not forget the trading triangle. All right? So we see now, price break above a resistance level, the peak one, price retesting it. Okay. And also, we are on the edge of the peak for two. But, you see? So, if you receive a signal here to buy, we will buy it. But, we can see that what the price is doing, the price was going down. So, the bear are dominating the market until this point. Okay, if the price did below the peak line and retest the peak line from below and the final resistance here, we will sell because the bear are controlling the market at this point. In fact, we can perfectly draw a line here. 
So the common trading mistake that traders are making when they are using this trading tool is that they switch their attention completely to the pitfork tool and they forget about the language of the price, okay, and uh, the price itself. So price touching, you can see here how traders were using. It wasn't bad here for two months, not too bad, okay, but you don't want to sell anyhow, anywhere, you see, on the edge in the middle. Here, the stochastic was overbought, RSI also overbought. Some traders were selling here, but they probably break above it, okay, before coming down, okay. Again, here, on the edge, price went down for one month. Stochastic was overbought, RSI overbought. You want to take a valid signal, and if the signal has changed, the music must change. Okay, here you see some traders were selling, probably break above, okay, the edge of uh, the pitchfork tool before coming back down. Look carefully, this is the common mistakes, you see here, the price pulled back to the media line of the pitchfork tool, where my cursor is, alright, and the stochastic was also in the oversold zone. The RSI didn't reach the oversold zone, but the stochastic was oversold zone, stochastic crazy traders. We're buying by loss, blah 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 blah, and finally here they were taken out. Okay. The key point I want you to remember in this video is that it doesn't matter which trading tool you are using, it doesn't matter which indicator you are using, it doesn't matter what is your trading style. The price, the number one indicator. Yes, we use indicator as trader always ask me, but we want traders. To focus on the price which is the ball the number one indicator I want to show you other example of mistakes that traders are making you want to work with things that remain intact in the market instead of working with things that are changing consistently all right let's be on another stock the UTS uniform tango s ray okay United Technology American stock that I'm using here I have my piece for already drawn on this uh, monthly chart Look carefully, price, you see, three point we need, this point here, second point here, a third point here. Price was bullish, and then pulled back. No total retracement, as I explained to you, so we draw our pitchfork tool. You can see here, carefully, the price was coming back near, traders sold it here, on the edge here. It's not a bad place to look for opportunity to sell, but, but they, they have a good reason, because the price was bearish first, and was coming to to this zone but how do we sell we sell okay when a price dip below a support level and try to retest a support level that's the best place to sell so in fact we will there's a kind of uh destroy line here that's the best option that's the best setups so you can see roughly you see this level here you see okay price you see find the support here try to go up okay it did below that blue line and coming to retest it. So it's not a bad place. But you can see traders that were selling here, they didn't know that there was a blue, there is a support here because they forget the price. They were selling, but you had to take profit here or you need to secure your gain as the price did change direction again here. You see now? But if you forget the price, support, resistance, trend line, and channel, we can make a lot of wrong decisions. So trader was selling here, stochastic was overboard. Price also are the. I need to say this to traders because now a lot of traders, especially those who are new, first time maybe you know about this trading tool, and you may think that okay, you provide me with the best setup and I can trade anyhow. Okay, the setup is one thing. We see the setup on a higher time frame. I'm on a monthly chart. I can use this on the weekly chart. I say to traders, use it on the weekly chart, monthly chart, okay, yearly chart, quarterly chart, and then switch through the signal time frame before going to the entry time frame. You can use this on any time frame, but you want it to be solid, okay, so you don't make the wrong decision. The higher time frames command the lower time frame. So stochastic was overbought, RSI was overbought. You see. They want to sell price went down for a few times, but do not forget the key level. You draw in, if you keep drawing the support and the resistance level, you are likely to make excellent decisions and to understand what's taking place and also to exit the trade. The pitfork tool will allow traders to enter the trade at the best place and to exit also the trade at the best place. Okay, but the price is the number one indicator. Okay, so you see now right here 
The second mistake that traders are making when they are using this tool, they are forgetting the media line of the small channel. You see, there's a small channel here rising. You see two channels, the top one, which is a very bullish, and the lower bound. But we want to pay attention to the general direction of the pitchfork tool. It's a rising channel. If it's rising, watch it, okay? <laughs> it's it's uh, okay? rising, okay? Watch it. If it's declining, watch it. If it's horizontal, watch it. Market patterns. Do not forget the media line of the small channel right here, the blue one. In fact, what I will do, let's change the color of that. So you can get into the habit. Once you draw your pitchfork tool, you can draw the media line just to know to go into the mind of other traders. You see how the price was coming near the media line of the, the small channel here? It's a, it's a support there, you see? You see? But you may say to me, George, this tool is powerful. It's not as, as powerful as such. The price, draw key level on the price. You see here the price here, there's a price change that I see here, change that I see here. So draw lines on, the, on your price and you can locate all this thing. The, let's call it this one in, um, in red, okay. The one I've drawn now, you see, price was touching this level. You see the tail of all this candle. Pay attention to that. It's almost, you see here, touch it here, okay. Draw three lines, okay. All right, Let, let's draw another line. I just forget about the pitchfork too for a while. Let's pay attention to the price. I'm drawing this point and this point. Okay, just pay attention to it for a while. Pay attention to the line I'm drawing now. And I'm going to call it, okay, in turquoise, okay. Pay attention to the turquoise line. You see how the price come to the edge here? Though it was touching the median line of the small challenge as I was explaining to you. Look, right here, right it is. So using the price itself and paying attention to the key level of the price, just keep drawing line, we can make excellent decision. Where are we now? My apology because I'm drawing too much lines on my chart, but I'm doing it on purpose so the traders can understand what is happening and the mistake that they are making because they switch off their focus and they are looking at something else. See, there's a hotspot in the zone. I'm drawing this point and this point, I have a new line which I can call out in a different color now. Uh, okay, pink is very clear. Okay, you see now? Pay attention to the new one that I've drawn out. It's the pink one here, just below the, the, the green one that I've drawn, you see? This point, you see? So we don't want to forget the media line of the small channel. And the most important thing, traders, is to pay attention to the, to the trend line, support, resistance line, on the time frame that we are on, the higher time frame commands the lower time frame. You see it? Do not make those mistakes. Do not assume anything. Go step by step. Draw lines. Okay? Next stock that I'm going to be bring now, DRS, Delta Indian. Okay? Uh, Sierra, the world's uh, Disney company, American stock. Okay? I have my line again ready here. What do we see? Pay attention to the blue line that I've drawn here. This point and this point allow me to draw this blue line on my chart. You see here? Now, the blue line I'm talking about. I have drawn my pitchfork tool, three point I need, this point here, second one here, and the third one here. I have my pitchfork ready because the market was first bullish, then there was a retracement, not a 100% retracement, a bit of profit taking, which means the bull are still in charge, all right, dominant force, bullish, because the retracement was not total, okay, all right, so, price start changing direction here, we, as I explained to you in the first part of the video, we are watching this, uh, this uh, media line, the price are approaching this level now, traders, stochastic, 833 is overbought, crazy stochastic trader will press trade to sell, I hope they're controlling their risk carefully, but the RSI was not overbought. Okay, this is a conflict between the RSI traders and the stochastic traders. The RSI trader will be buying, <coughs> the stochastic traders that are trading the stochastic anyhow will be selling. <coughs> you can see here. But somebody else, though we are on the edge of the pitchfork tool, does not, okay, <laughs> guarantee a sell signal because what the price was coming on the edge, because it's a common trading mistake. Again, look, 
this point and this point allow me to draw the blue line what has happened here the prime break above the blue line which is a key level we are stuck between these two level i'll stay out for a while because it's a bit messy some trader will be busy selling some trader will be busy buying i don't want to be part of it it's a bit crazy here if you want to be part of it you can use it for day trading purposes all right day trading purposes in out in out okay carefully without blowing your account okay if you want to sell, whenever you see a signal to sell, ask yourself, do we have a better resistance level? Okay, all right, because the price is looking for a better resistance level when it's going up, you want to know where you are, so it's not too bad. So there was a resistance here. Okay, so it's not too bad. If you receive a signal here to sell, we will take it. But we know that we don't have enough room because of the blue line. As it's approaching the blue line, we want to take some profit. But if you forget that, if you didn't bother to try, try draw just a simple powerful trend line, we may be waiting for the miracle to happen that the price will definitely come to the lower part or at least to the media line of the small channel, and it didn't. It found a support and went up. Stock I see still overbought. Where are we now? As I said to you, do not forget the media line of the small channel. You see here? That's where we are now. I hope. Uh, Roughly, roughly, okay? Yes? Roughly, okay? It makes sense. It's roughly. All right. All right. Something like that, okay? Is he acceptable? All right. Somewhere there, okay? Leave it there. We leave it there. Uh, try to be like Lavoisier you now. So you see now? So we, we wait. Now we come to the media line of the top for small channel. You see, on the edge, Stokas is overboard, the RSI also is overboard. But, look, pay attention. I want to draw another line. This is what I'm saying to you, do not forget the price. If you are using this pitchfork tool, we break above this support, this resistance level, which means the bullish force is strong. Going to use, uh, I'm using green again. This one, the green one here. Price so desperate to retest it here. We are also sitting on the media line of pitchfork tool. Okay, so you can see that the pitchfork tool is excellent tool to determine the key, uh, the hot spot trading zone. You see the media line of the top channel, how it was guiding us a bit here to know that there is a resistance here. If you didn't know, you will know that there's a kind of a line there. But if you draw it, you'll know that there's some trade that will be challenging the price at this point rolling it down see so you want to know where are the key level you see now so the whole point of the pitchfork tool is to help us again to detect visible support resistance and key level and also sometimes hidden support okay resistance level i want to bring on now another stock epic is tango at and Amer another American stock. I have my pitchfork already drawn on this chart. This point here, this point, and the third one here. You see that uh, the price uh, was running first within the rising channel. Pay attention, always pay attention to the direction of the pitchfork tool. Price D below the rising channel was retesting on the edge. Stochastic was overbought, trade, you know, crazy stochastic trader will want to sell. Again here, they want to sell. Again here, they want to sell on the edge of the pitchfork tool. What I say today, traders, drawing your pitchfork tool, for instance, on the weekly chart, and then switching to the lower time frame, like hourly chart, 30 minute chart, 50 minute chart, whichever time frame you are on, will allow you to detect some key level and make excellent decision if you are day trading. But do not use the pitchfork tool like a magic one, okay? But use it and pay attention to the price itself, the number one indicator. You want to sell? Ask yourself, is this a value resistance level? Is, it, is the price going up? You want to know? So in this case, you can see that the price, this blue line here. Moment, please. I want to change again. Um, I'm, I run out of color, in fact. Let's use gray this time, okay, it's, it's visible. Let's make it bigger also, my apologies to traders. So you see uh, 
key level, this is a gray line here. We break above it, we retest it here. Went up to the edge of the pitchfork tool. We bring it back again to the gray line here. You see? So we can make excellent decision, but we do not want to forget the price. But if you are using the pitchfork tool alone, like a magic one, now we are again on the edge here. But what has happened, as I explained to you, you see here? Prior run fast and then pull back. Here, do you, can you see it? The key is a it's a support zone here. All right. So what has happened now? We break above that support level, which is the blue line here. We did the same thing here. Went up a bit before coming down. Here again, we break above it. Now we are retesting it on the edge. If you didn't know, you won't be prepared to take profit. You want to know where to take profit and where to enter the trade. And the pitchfork tool, and the price itself, the number one indicator, will allow you to make excellent decision, so you do not, okay, come into the market at the wrong time, and also at the wrong place. As I'm demonstrating here on this chart, the pitchfork tool alone is not enough. We want to use the pitchfork tool with the market principle, keeping our eyes wide open on the price itself, the number one indicator. Another thing that I say to traders, it's not all about technical, the fundamental count. You may see sometimes the best, tech, the best set technical setup, but the fundamental may be weak. So sometimes you see some stock very bullish, double bottom, and you want to place a trend, but you just need to go to Google Finance or Yahoo Finance, and you may read something that will completely change your mind. You want to combine the technical and fundamental. On the other hand, sometimes traders that are purely tech fundamental traders, we read something about a company as like this here, fundamental very strong at the top, especially this level. And crazy fundamental traders will say that everything is perfect, the, the, the net asset value is gorgeous, okay. All the future projections are excellent and they will buy here. At the time when the technical traders notice that the price, the number one indicator, is confirming to us there is no more higher high, we want to sell and crazy fundamental trader will be buying here. I feel sorry for those uh, fundamental traders. Okay? And they will be complaining that uh, they should ban bearish, uh, bearish traders completely, that they are evil traders. I disagree. Come on. The price will go up and go down. <laughs> because you buy to hold for years and somebody's selling, they are evil traders. They are not. They sell, they buy. In the market, people will buy and people will sell. So do not forget that. So you see now, so on the edge, though we are below, you see here, so can you see the overbought, Prada will say he must definitely go to the overbought zone, but there is a support level, we do not ignore it, break above retest, we are watching this level carefully. This is this video is for educational purposes only, it's neither a solicitation to buy or sell any financial instrument that we are discussing in this video, it's just to guide the traders that are willing to learn to trade, there's no magic in the market, okay. The next talk is a Verizon communication, Epic VZ Victor Zulu. So right here, I have my line already drawn. Three point. I need to draw my pitch for two. This point where my cursor is. Second point right here. The third one here. The prior was bullish, but we have a in fact here. Look, total retracement. Whenever you see a total retracement after a bullish progression. Don't be very, 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 okay, bullish. Sometimes you may see a consolidation before being bullish because the bulls lost control. All right, you see, went up and then we take everything back. You want to go and check the fundamental. Why? The price went up all the way here and investor decided to take profit completely. Check the fundamental before committing. Sometimes you may see a gorgeous double bottom or triple bottom or five bottoms only to see that the price is going down more. If the fundamentals are weak, if you have a poor management and the company is crumbling under a serious competition, there's nothing you can do about it. All right, so it's very wise to combine the technical and the fundamental, okay? Okay, now, so we see now I draw my piece for two already, okay? So now we have, see, we, we, it's a rising bully, it's a rising pitchfork tool, as you can see on this chart. We did below a rising channel, it become bearish now because we lost control in this session. Come back and retest it here, look, on the edge. 
This is a gorgeous signal here. Why? You can, in fact, the stochastic was overbought for a long time. But those who are paying attention to the prior will not sell here, will not sell here. But they will be prepared to take a sell signal where we are where, at this point. Why? Because you see the prior went up fast. Okay. There was a key level here. Another key level here. The prior D below a key level was target. It couldn't go above it. Now we come to retest it finally here. He retest it here, trade the solid. We test it here, trade the solid. You do not just sell it, you wait for a clear cut signal. Break below, retest, break above, retest. Together with the pitfall tool, we allow traders to make excellent trading decisions. Here we have a situation where the price, the language of the price, price D below is support level, price retesting is support level on the edge of the pitfall tool. If, do not forget that if, if you receive a signal to sell, check the fundamental, all right? Is it the right time? Okay, and then take it. The common sense trend line, we allow traders to make excellent decisions. Draw common sense trend line, okay, you see? If you stack above a rising, a bullish trend line, know that it's it, it, it still bullish, okay? Though we are on the edge, look, we are still above it. The setup, the signal, and the entry point. Those who are practicing, those who are learning gradually, not those who are gambling this market, try to come into the market looking for some software that will trade for them. That's not exist. That's not exist. Okay, don't look for software. I mean, it's up to you what you want to do with your own money. But if you ask me what I think, my view, <laughs> that's my view. All right. Okay. Now again, another stock here, Dupont Nemo, DD Delta Delta. Okay, it's a nice name. So, have my piece for through this point this point and this point ladies and gentlemen we see here the price uh, d below the media line now in fact here we have our line ready priorly to retest the edge these are the type of signal traders are looking for and you can see that the, the stochastic 830 also was overbought so crazy stochastic trader will be willing to sell but the rsi was not overbought so there's a conflict here but that's not mean that when both are overbought we sell no now we just need to pay attention to the price. You see, there was a resistance here, resistance here, resistance here, resistance here. Price went above that level, but capitulate very fast. We are retesting here. I, if I receive a signal here to sell, I will sell. All right, you see, you sell it. It's rolling it down. You see, trader will take profit on the edge of the pitfall tool. But look, pay attention. If you draw even a support level of your tool. On your chart, you can see that this is a support level. So as it's rolling it down, price going down, price looking for better support level, you'll be prepared to take at least some profit or secure your gain to avoid that a winning trade becomes a losing trade. Now look, we did, <laughs> we only took people to profit, price went back again to retest again the same level. Sell it again. Okay, price going down, pay attention to the key level. There are some support here, a lot of support here. Okay. You see now? So, traders ask me to do video about uh, this pitfall tool. There are plenty of videos on YouTube, on the internet. A lot of traders can perfectly draw this tool. Some traders know about this tool. Some traders have been using this tool for years. But they can't make a okay, consistent winning trade. The first reason is that traders are paying too much attention to the tool and they forget the price sum. Or they are violating the market principles. Do not make a trading decision on one single time frame and do not forget the price self the number one indicator. When you see a setup, be curious. Just check. If you're about to enter a trade on, an, on a particular time frame like a daily chart, be curious. Check the higher time frame, weekly chart, monthly chart, yearly chart. Sometimes you'll be surprised say, Oh, I'm grateful that I checked those high time frame. Otherwise, I would have made a lot of wrong decisions. Sometimes traders don't enter the trade and they are very happy because they know that avoid that mistake. And somebody will tell you that that stock went down big time. They will say, no, I didn't buy it. So you're so happy that you didn't bother to buy it. And a lot of traders, okay, went into that trap, okay. And you are very happy. Though you didn't make money, you are happy that you didn't fall into the trap. Okay, all right. This is it. When it comes to trading itself, traders are very, very emotional. Very, very emotional. And uh, this is what is uh, getting traders into um, trouble. The first thing you want to do is to know how much you want to risk first. 
And ask yourself, if I lost that money, how will I fail? If it's, you know that you can't handle it, don't risk that money. That's, it's just a one simple rule, okay? If you, if you think it's going to be too much for you, don't risk it. Just don't risk it. All right? Take reasonable risk and control the risk, and you will be, okay, you will be much, much more happier, okay? All right? I hope you find this useful, okay? All right, so now we have again a pitfork tool here for this IBM, okay? This is my last example. I think I've shown you many examples. So you may avoid those mistakes. IBM, we are again on a monthly chart. I know the American stocks. And I've drawn my pitchfork tool, this point here, and this point here, and the third one here. You can see that uh, this is uh, a beautiful here. You see, price came back, and let me highlight that for you. By the way, this video is for educational purposes only. It's neither a solicitation nor an offer to buy or sell any financial instrument. It is primarily for the TSTW SYS 008 traders. So we can see if we, as I said to traders, when we are trading, we are looking on our left hand side, okay? So there was some resistance here. Resistance, resistance, okay. Resistance, same resistance level. We were in fact in a kind of consolidation mode, market patterns before anything else. Here, we can see that the price breaks above, again, we are resistance level, in fact, here, yeah. you see? So trader was trying to sell, which is perfectly okay because it was a resistance level before. If you receive a signal at a resistance level to sell, we can take it. But below that resistance level, you see the top one, there's a support, which is the red one here. So we don't have enough room. This is some trader may decide not to be participate in this. They would prefer it to break above my uh, a new resistance level, this one here, before they want to buy, because they know that they don't have enough room. Or, if you take it here, you want to control it carefully, because you know there are sellers here. So they sold it one month, but went up a bit, they sold it again. A bit messy, you see? But, you can see that my peak for two is rising, and the price was bullish. Pay attention to this level here. He went up to this level and come by the test here. If I receive a signal here to sell, uh, to buy, my apology, to buy, I will take it. Why? Look on your left hand side, ladies and gentlemen. Look on your left hand side. Language of the price. You see here, the price went up first, okay, and then I display this high here, pull back, and display a higher high. Okay. Now we dip below the previous high, which is this one. Telling us that the, bearish, the bullish momentum is weakening because in normal condition, the price should find a support on the previous high. We shouldn't violate the previous high. This is the language of the price in the uptrend, this level here. I'm talking about this one here. So this one here, because we were bullish, we break above it. If you return it back, back below this one, which is a kind of psychological price level, and we are in trouble. So first time, if you look carefully, you can see that the price was bullish for one month, but quickly returned below it. It's bearish. You see? And that bearish momentum was quite strong, and we violate even the previous, okay, higher low. A low and a higher low. Completely bearish. Why? I'm trying to explain to you why I will be happy to take here. Look, we return back above that key level, which was a critical level, previous high. We D below it. Now we are now back above it. Traders try to sell again because it was in fact a weak key level, but the price stay above it. Second time on the edge of uh, our the media line of our pitch of tool, the music has changed. This is a psychological price level. The red one here is a psychological price level, and we have in fact a beautiful okay double bottom. On, on the psychological price level. This is, I want, don't want to remove, um, I'm moving too much lines here. Moment, please. I've distorted some of my uh, drawing, but I hope you are following me. So you see that um, there was a, a, a price deep below here, went up a bit, and then deep again here, and it's a kind of a double bottom here, if you accept that, on the edge of our pitchfork tool. 
If you understand what has happened here, the psychology that went through the mind of traders, they rejected this level, price went down big time, but we are now above it, and it's holding nicely. First retest, it holds nicely. Second retest, the second time, okay, if we receive again a signal to buy, we will take it. It's getting very interesting. And you can, okay, hold your ground. And there was also a stochastic pattern here, which I don't want to talk about, talking about the 2.4 SP. A stochastic pattern confirmed to us that there is a trouble for the bear here. They were selling big time, but it's holding nicely. And a stochastic pattern confirmed to us that there's a high chance that we may push it to the edge, which happened here. Okay. All right. So you can see, sick, as I explained to you before, when we see a rising channel and the price D below the rising channel is bearish, but this time, if the price break above a rising channel, is bullish. This time we are sitting above a rising channel. We want to watch it carefully. But always look on your left-hand side. Though the price is testing the edge, we have a top here. Talking about looking on the left, Okay, I don't know that top. It's bearish. It's bearish. We will see what will happen. If I went up, display a low, a higher low, but failed to display a new higher high, it's bearish. The bullish momentum will be confirmed as soon as we display, we display a new higher high. Language of the price, so far we are in a kind of indecision zone. We want to check the fundamental, or because we are on a monthly chart, nothing should stop us. To be a bit curious or look at a yearly chart and see what's happening here. Start drawing trend line, channel to see whether we are at the... Okay, so what I will do now, I will remove all my drawing because I know that the higher time frame command the lower time frame. Talking about market principle and the price shelf, the principle that govern the price shelf that we do not want to violate. I can draw now on another higher time frame, the P42 on the higher time frame will command the P42 on the lower time frame. Hope it makes sense. <laughs> All right. So I will draw it roughly like this. It's uh, because the price went a bit uh, horizontal here. See? So first point right here, the second point here, and the third point here. Sometimes they may say, oh, George, you can put it here. Okay, you draw it like this. Here. Okay? Don't 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 be afraid to, 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 to be very flexible, okay? Try a different position. This point, this point, and this point. That's what I will see. So I can leave this line here like this and say, okay, you see the price was approaching the edge. That's why some trader were challenging the price on the yearly chart. If I, because I always want to be curious, if I put it like this, then I will say, okay, some trader will be happy to buy on the edge here. So I see both pitches because I want to go into the mind of other traders. I'm not alone in the market. I want to know what other traders are doing. Somebody who draw it like this, We'll be willing to take profit here because we are approaching the media line of this uh, P for tool. Somebody else who draw it like this will say this is a break above and retest. So we want to know what's going to the mind of other traders. Okay, paying attention to the price. There was a resistance level, which is the blue line here. Okay, we, we can say that we're on the edge. If the bearish momentum is strong, the next, uh, okay, I'm distorting something here. I just want to draw a line here. We will bring it to the, okay, like, if it's strong, we may bring it there. He finally support him. So at this point in time, because I'm on a yearly chart, nothing can stop me. It's my own chart. I can draw. You all use the six critical price level, talking about this small media line. Okay. What I'm doing here, I'm just highlighting those who know the six critical price level. We understand a bit what I'm trying to do here. Um, I'm drawing some red line here. The red lines are highlighting, okay, the 2011 yearly candle. And I will also draw the media line of uh, 2011 candle. Uh, which uh, I will call her now in turquoise to know where we are. As long as we are above the media line of uh, 2011, it's still bullish. But we are now, we went above the previous high of last year, which is 2011. We are now, deep, we are now returning back below it. Okay. 
So we want to know the key level, the red line, the turquoise, and this one, and we are watching it carefully. Let's go back again now. You see now? Let's go now to the let's go to the four hour charts. Okay, it's a bit crowded time frame for this IBM to see what is taking place there. Nothing can stop us to start drawing line here on our own charts. On the four hour charts, we can draw lines price out of this and now we can draw some line like this it's our own charge nobody can stop us as i encourage traders to be busy drawing line on their charts so they can make excellent a uh, trading decision i hope you have enjoyed this video about the pitchfork tool a pitchfork tools trade setup that you will put into use to make excellent trading decision until the next time enjoy yourself and be a very happy. We are the GSTWSYS0 zero, zero, uh, traders. Speak to you soon.